This is the Permian world, a map of which bears no resemblance to that of today's Earth. A world of stark contrast between vast supercontinent, a continuous mass containing almost all the continental material of the Earth's surface, surrounded by a vast sea known as the Pantalassa Ocean. Pangaea, the megacontinent, was comprised of two supercontinents, Gondwanaland and Laurasia. Surrounding the entirety of Pangaea, as well as the North and South China blocks, was a hemisphere-sized ocean. This was the largest ocean of the Phanerozoic. Some paleo-oceanographers believe that the Panthalassa was stagnant, highly stratified and possibly anoxic. The evidence for this anoxic stratified ocean may be a consequence of the event. The continental configuration of Pangaea meant that there may have been extreme weather conditions in the interiors of the supercontinent due to a much higher thermal capacity of the ocean mass in comparison to the continental mass, which would heat and cool much more readily than the oceans. Coastal monsoons and arid interiors would have dominated the landmass's climate. The terrestrial biota of the Permian included a wide diversity of plants and animals. The Permian began with the Carboniferous flora flourishing. During the mid-Permian, a major transition occurred between these plants to more advanced seed ferns, which dominated the forest floor, whilst conifers formed a dense canopy overhead. Cockroach-like arthropods were the most common insects of the Permian. During the mid-Permian, aerial predator some with reported wingspans of up to 70 centimetres. During the Permian period, several other forms of insects also appeared, including the earliest forms of beetles. The terrestrial realm was occupied by diverse forms of specialised mammal-like reptiles known as therapsids. These included the hippo-sized herbivore, Dinocydont, and his main predator, the saber-toothed Dinogorgon, the king of the Permian jungle. The Panthalassa Ocean, surrounding the supercontinent of Pangaea, was the largest ocean in the Phanerozoic and supported a diverse range of marine life, including crinoids, bryozoans, echinoids, bivalves and brachiopods. And many marine vertebrates such as sharks which had evolved since the Devonian and dwindling species of trilobites. The end of the Permian era marked the most catastrophic mass extinction this Earth has ever seen. Evidence for this can be seen in particular in the Karoo Basin in South Africa, where Permian strata, rich in fossil life, is underlying layers of strata containing no fossils, no evidence of soils, plants or animals. In fact, they show no forms of life at all. These dead zones represent land that was completely barren and marks the stage upon which the Permio-Triassic boundary lies from a place that was once a rainforest to a biological desert. It is still subject of debate what may have caused the Permo-Triassic extinction. To explain the most widely accepted view, our eyes turn to Siberia. Now a frozen landscape was once one of the largest areas of volcanic activity on the planet. Approximately 248 to 250 million years ago, at the Permian-Triassic boundary, a spectacular volcanic event occurred. This large igneous province, known as the Siberian Traps, erupted between 3 and 5 million cubic metres of magnesium-rich basaltic magma over an interval of nearly 600,000 years or less. This eruption would have resulted in the release of vast amount of ash, carbon and sulphur dioxide and water vapour high into the atmosphere. The ash would have resulted in small-scale suffocations of fauna as a direct result of ash inhalation and indirectly stifling photosynthesis. The ash falls may also have darkened northern sea ice and snow, decreasing albedo and resulting in large-scale melting of the cryosphere. This sudden influx of fresh water had catastrophic effects on thermal haline circulation which may have been accentuated by the continental and oceanic arrangement of Pangaea during the Permian, causing stagnation of the world's oceans, causing dysoxia in the deep ocean. 
However, it was the gases which had most detrimental effect on the biosphere. Sulfur dioxide, when ejected into the atmosphere, reacted with water vapor to form sulfuric acid rain, which affected the acidity of the world's oceans. This had severe consequences for biomineralizing marine organisms, especially shallow-dwelling calcium carbonate precipitating fauna. The mass release of water vapor increased the thermal capacity of the atmosphere, causing increased warming. The overall effect of the Siberian traps was global warming, which may have triggered the next onslaught of the Permio-Triassic mass extinction event, the release of methane. Methane is produced thermally by decomposition of organic matter or from organisms called methanogens, which discard methane as a waste product. This methane can be trapped in continental margin sediments in frozen lattice-like structures called clathrates. The stability of the clathrates is dependent on specific pressure and temperature conditions. Any minor change in these conditions results in a sudden release of this methane gas into the atmosphere. The release of this methane would have further contributed to global warming and ocean anoxia by impairing the metabolisms of aerobic marine organisms. Some of this methane gas would have been oxidized by methanotrophic organisms, which in turn produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. This increase of CO2 resulted in reduction of oxygen levels in the deep ocean, which if concentrations were high enough, would have caused deep ocean anoxia decimating many species of the marine realm. Continental aridity and global warming, coupled with the release of hydrogen sulfide and methane gases, had cataclysmic effects on land, devastating populations of flora and fauna of the terrestrial biosphere. The presence of high concentration of greenhouse gases in the ocean and atmosphere led to a devastating loss of marine life. The Permio-Triassic extinction event wiped out 57% of marine families and 95% of marine species. Marine organisms that were attached to the sea floor were greatly affected during this event. The effects on land included an abrupt decline in the major floral groups including conifers and seed ferns as well as the decimation of up to 60% of all therapsid groups. After the extinction event, the Triassic period still showed signs of an anoxic ocean affected from the Permian. Recovery took millions of years due to the harsh conditions that remained. However, reefs began to recover in the mid-Triassic. Sclerectinian corals thrived. One out of five bryozoan orders survived, with many bony fish and sharks thriving also. Indications suggest that many groups of flora and fauna did not fully recover until the start of the mid-Triassic. Some of the surviving groups did not persist long after this event, while others that barely survived went on to produce diverse and long-lasting lineages such as the mammals.